everyone. Um, Table of Contents is the title of a performance work produced by Siobhan Davies Stance and co authored by Siobhan Davies, Charlie Morrissey, um, there they are, Matthias Sperling, Helka Kasky, Andrea Buckley, there with Charlie, and myself, uh, Rachel Cliche. The project was conceived by Siobhan Davis Dance in co production with the ICA in London, uh, the Tramway in Glasgow, and the Arnolfini in Bristol, all cross disciplinary art venues. From its inception, it was envisaged that this work would be created to be specifically performed in the visual art spaces that, within these venues and to be the sole artwork present in the space. The question of considering archive as an area of investigation arose very early on within the project for two key reasons. Firstly, the project was founded upon the invitation into the visual art space, a world that perhaps could be seen to be built upon the authority of the archive, um, on exhibiting collections of collated bodies of evidence, most typically realized perhaps through the artist's retrospective. And we began to question as a group whether dance and choreographic practice needed to be able to evidence a retrospective of work in order for it to be valued along the lines of how a body of practice could be criti critically evaluated within the usual boundaries of the art canon. However, secondly, Davis is one of the very few choreographic artists who has an established and publicly accessible online archive created in collaboration with our colleagues and hosts here at Coventry University, um, Siobhan Davis Replay. Um, for those of you who don't know, Replay is a vast online repository containing an extensive record of Davis's choreographic work and this includes written documents and audio recordings and video footage of both rehearsal as well as final performance works. Um, this spans over 30 years and Davis is both collaborator in its formation and the subject of it. It collates and documents her entire choreographic output in, in multiple ways. So, therefore, archived emerged as this core area of investigation and quite immediately we began considering that within dance and choreographic practice an archive is also more than the evidence of dance works as captured documents contained within a building or within a facility. We recognize the body as a portable repository of creative and choreographic data, a human library or a human hard drive of non-verbal documents to be accessed in research or in performance. Therefore, archive as documents of dance works and body as archive became firmly established as areas that we wish to deeply explore within the making and the performance of the work table of contents. The context of the gallery space also allowed us to choose to directly consider the close proximity of the audience as a key concern through the natural close proximity that the gallery space allows. And we wanted to engage audiences through our movement activity as a kind of live encounter rather than something other over there. We, we wanted to somehow as well acknowledge and make known the idea that the audience would be meeting our bodily and historical archive with their own. Table of Contents was a co-authored work approximately four months in the making. And at the beginning of this process, the digital traces of Davis's work played a very, very key role. We collectively decided that the online archive replay was to be used as a starting reference point and that rather than think of replay as a collection of works in which we must contemplate or reproduce each work intact, we should treat it as a bank of information and allow ourselves to consider fragments of it. And we began to call it compost, you know, uh, the title of the presentation. And we wanted to, the information um, within Replay to act as this kind of like rich, gooey material substance that we could metaphorically imagine was nourishing the next growth of practice that was about to happen. Added to this, however, as well as Replay, was each of the six artists on this co-authored project each of the six artists own substantial history of archive, of art, both artistic practice, which could also be considered alongside that of replay. So how does one begin to approach and consider an archive in order to understand how it might be useful and relevant in the now? And how do we realize that we can connect to another source of ourselves 
that is shaped by the history and culture and activity surrounding us through learning about the past within its material remains. When I began the research process of Table of Contents, I immediately recognised replay as a containing vast and rich information. And even though I wasn't actually present in it, I sought to find what my tangible connection to it could be in terms of um, equating myself with this archive. Initially, the first thing I did was the very, very obvious thing. I, I revisited the works that I had seen live, starting from 1985 when I first saw Davis's work, Rushes, as a 14-year-old schoolgirl back in Manchester. Jumping through each decade with each click of the mouse, because obviously I was accessing this through the computer, I started to get a sense not only of the winding journey of the choreographer at my fingertips, but also a very nostalgic recollection of my own winding history happening in tandem. Through the activity of viewing, this in itself became a live process of recalling a simultaneous history beyond the physical, visible artifacts playing out in front of me. Two documentaries were at play, the one on the screen and the personal memory screen playing in my mind, and they were both running in tandem. And this doubling or coupling of information hints at what perhaps was a desired and eventual outcome of the live event between artists and audience much further down the line. It was interesting to note, however, that the viewing of movement material also contained a reminder of a clearly ingrained patterning within my own embodied system, namely that in the past, the function of the video recording was to act as a choreological tool. So in order to bypass this very particular habit of mine, and it's quite a strong habit of avoiding this urge to simply reproduce the movement material from a video recording, I then kind of had a break from watching the video rehearsal footage and the, the actual footage of, of dancing. And I began to uh, explore alternative material within the replay archive. And I began to watch and, and listen in earnest to over 30 extensive interviews and talks and lecture demonstrations. And all of this was offering kind of additional and very rich sources of compost. So what is the separation between the choreographic material and the dancer. So replay is a repository not only of choreographic information but also of multiple identities. The movement material captured in the, the multiple videos in the replay archive was for me a capturing of the movement identities of the individuals inventing as well as doing the movement. Their identities for me was in some way very knitted into the material that is forever captured one could say that maybe they are captured themselves. And I could trace a, a really clear <coughs> timeline of my past teachers and peers and friends very present within this digital evidence. So for me, the strongest tangible connection I had to replay came from the actual hands-on physical encounters I had had with those very same dancers in studio situations beyond Davis's rehearsal studios. And as often happens, when dancers teach, there's a very strong relationship between the artistic practice and the pedagogic practice. And this idea that the information that one is working with in an artistic context, that's carried in the body, and it's shared with another body, and to be contained, reconfigured within yet another, and, and passed on and on, much, very much like an oral tradition. Therefore, at that point, I realized my clearest physical connection to Davis's work had also come through the, the multiple open kind of morning class I'd done with most of her collaborators and dancers. And it is this that really interested me at the most uh, at this point. Okay, in considering my own potentially retrievable movement archive alongside that of replay, I felt my history as a professional dancer was split into two very distinct phases. Um, in short, the first 15 years were spent making and logging and executed in rehearsal and performance very set sequences of movement material in collaboration with over 20 different choreographers. Um, and the latter eight years were spent not knowing what movement was about to happen, i.e. working almost exclusively with improvisation within performance. However, I really felt that I should consider every encounter with another person as a, a kind of opportunity for a learning exchange that informs my practice and so developing it. I could also include then every conversation about practice or about art or about philosophy as informing what I do or how I do what I do. 
And in most recent years, as just mentioned, I've been working with improvisation. Of, and for me, this has been about allowing the body to be primarily seen in a state of paying attention. And coupled with this is also the attempt to practice a kind of non-attachment to the movement that's just happened in order to attend to being very totally present to the movement that is, is happening. And this is something akin to what I would describe as the movement equivalent of drawing a line in pencil with the right hand while simultaneously rubbing it out with the left. So kind of erasing the trace just as it's happened. Um, and so one may jump to the conclusion that this work, work, way of working is almost the antithesis of considering an archive, but actually, in fact, for me, it relies upon an unshakable trust and belief in the ability to process and respond in the moment from an unconscious bedrock of previous experience and accumulated information. And so this is how I use my archive now, by working with nonverbal movement information as it arises in order to tap into the notion that how we may think and process and understand is primarily through an operation of embodied activity and memory, a kind of calling up of information from this possible archive called the body from each moment to moment. Um, so, okay, so how do these archives meet then? The replay archive and my archive or how I currently understand my archive and you know, how does this person, that pe person meet in order to perhaps reconfigure and creatively provoke what could happen next. Um, within Tale of Contents, I created and performed three solo pieces. Um, I, I had a couple of duets that I grappled with, but they were abandoned in the rehearsal process, and we all collectively performed Davis's most recent work, Manual. Um, all of what I made, however, had the creative origins of trying to meet the identities of various individuals captured within replay, and to be in conversation with their documented thinking and strategies. So I'm going to focus on one of the solos that I made called Headphones. Um, and, and I made this in response to the significant presence of the artist Jill Clark um, within Davis's archive. Um, Yes, three minutes. Oh, my goodness. I'll, I'll speak really fast. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jill, a founder member of Siobhan Davis Dance and a key figure in the creation and performance of much of her work. Um, as a teacher, maker, and advocate of independent dance practice, Clark also held a position of profound importance and respect within the whole group. In 2011, she created a series of talks hosted at Siobhan Davis Dance as part of Independent Dancers Crossing Border series, and in it she also delivers a talk of her own, a reflection of her own archive within a wider analysis of her thinking in relation to practice and notions of perception and paying attention. And the talk is very deeply vibrant in its questioning of why we do and what we do and how we do it. My decision to facilitate the ability to listen to Clark's talk was the most direct way in which I could allow my archive in the now meet and work with her archive captured in the recording whilst meeting the multiple archives in the performance environment. In the solo headphones, I wear a big pair of radio headphones, and there are multiple uh, pairs available for the audience to also wear if they wish, and therefore listen to the transmitted talk concurrently with myself. The creative task I've given myself in he headphones involves the activity of working with a proposition that my movement activity functions as listening and thinking equipment and so is kind of akin or additional to my ears. And also that the movement is facilitating my understanding and not the other way around, not my mind is prompting how my body should move in response to information. So improvis improvisational movement activity in this instance is functioning as nonverbal thinking in itself and facilitating my understanding through processing these multiple fields of information as it's arising. This embodied thinking is informed by my accumulated archive, therefore I'm not trying to describe the text we are listening to with movement or even translate it into movement. I'm attempting to meet and understand the oral and conceptual information through the activity of moving as well as allow it to temper what I'm doing. So movement here is not an extension of my understanding, but I believe quite intrinsic to my process of understanding. And I'm proposing that it is a kind of faculty of cognition through, in this instance, the movement doing the listening and the processing and the thinking. And it's very important to mention here that I'm aware I'm not doing like a strict scientific 
uh, neurophenomenological kind of experiment. It's just my creative understanding from a, a, a kind of first-person perspective. Um, <clears throat> so intrinsic to this, however, is hearing the voice of Jill Clark, saturated within the timbre, pitch, accent, timing, and musicality of her voice, whether you know her or not, a trace of her thinking and her identity is very present in the space. And I'm choosing to meet her captured process of reflection with my working performance practice in that moment. So in this particular instances, instance, our practices meet, our identities, identities meet, and our archives meet. And that this work is also not a fixed product, but will always be a dialogue arising in the space in a physically visible way each and every time I do it. So, like our, so the archive, like compost, is still living, and it's emergent information, and it's a process of continued growth from when it first appeared and, and also when it was captured. So to conclude, what's that? <laughs> to conclude, the braiding together of the experience of exploring the digital archive replay with the multiple reflections of kind of personal memory and personal archive created a very rich field of individual practice to collectively offer and share with an audience through the piece table of contents. All six artists explored and thought about replay and wider notions of archive in a very personal way. Ways. All of us found roots into replay with which we could conceivably connect with it, with it as a potential source of compost. And together we produced a collection of 14 pieces spanning over three hours uh, without music, mainly solos and duets, all with aspects of improvisation and text and conversation inherent in their structure. So ultimately, in Table of Contents, we wanted to propose the body as a living, embodied archive, and we wanted to find out if it was possible to carry our archive into the space and make it available, and make it available to an audience, and for the body to be considered explicitly in performance as a living body of evidence, as a living and still growing document, through also valuing and remembering the past within these material remains. Sorry. <laughs>